Hey, this is OXDF, and we're doing another more challenges from the Hack the Boost ETF that re recently finished up on Hack the Box. Um, again, it's beginner level CTF. So uh, today I'm going to look at a couple of the reversing challenges. So um, I'm going to group these together because I going to teach some of the same concepts as we go through them. So we'll start with uh, Cult Meeting. And for this one, they give us both a um, elf binary here. So if we do File on Meeting, uh, you can see this is a standard uh, elf 64 bit with shared object. Um, and they also give us a uh, IP and port of like a Docker instance here. So I can come over here and say like netcat um, to this IP they gave me and connect. And so it asks me this question. It's asking me for a password. So I can say like uh, leave a comment and it says, oh, that's the wrong password. You're done. And so it's, that's actually the same thing if I get, if I look at the actual binary they give me, you know, um, like this video and you know it doesn't work so clearly what we have to do is reverse engineer the challenge uh in some way and get the password right um when you start you know reverse engineering can be like really scary because if you don't know assembly language and you can dumped into like ida and Yidra, it can be very there's a, there's a huge learning curve right uh but the good news here is there's a lot of things we can do before we get to that point so the first thing you want to do any like literally i'm doing this in the flare on challenge this year um not that it's just going to give you the flag but like these are some of the hardest um, reverse engineering challenges that are out there and you still always want to start by looking at strings. Um, so, cause again, even if they don't give you just straight up the flag, they are very much likely to give you hints as to where you're going. Um, I like to often start strings by its default. I think is five characters. I usually like to make it at least 10 cause it gets rid of a lot of the kind of junk. You can even make it more than that. Um, so let's scroll back up here a little bit. And it turns out, you can see right here, you can see, oh, you knocked on the door and a panel slides back. What's the password? And look at this right here. We have we have what looks like a password. Um, so we can solve this one real quickly with just strings. We can let's, we can try it. Um, and we put this password in here and it says, welcome inside and it gives me a shell. Um, so here I am in my own, a shell in my own box. That's not super useful. Um, but if we try it on the remote instance, we can get the flag before, well, actually we'll do that. We'll go, um, we'll try here. We paste in super secret password for you. And here we are at a shell. Uh, there's a flag.txt, so we can cat that. Flag.txt. And we've got the shell. We've got the flag. Um, I wanted to also look, because actually I didn't, I was guilty myself of not running strings right away. And the first thing I did, which is to put the second thing you should do after you run strings, was to run, uh, look to trace it. Um, because again, before you dive in and start looking at disassembly and uh, assembly language, you know, what we do is this, there's two two utilities that you're really going to want to use called strace and ltrace. And so strace is going to give you a, it's going to run the binary. I'm just going to need to put a dot slash there. And this is going to give me all the system calls the binary makes. So you can see it's making a system call to read, to, to end map, to close, to end protect. Now, when you run this, it looks kind of overwhelming. You get all this, what 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 on earth am I looking at? And this this one's pretty quick, pretty simple, so it's not even doing that much. Always, I recommend starting at the bottom because at the top is all this stuff. The system calls just happen when you open a binary and you start running it and the system's doing all stuff, stuff to get that, you know, getting memory in place and stuff like that. So we don't have to worry about that right now. Let's start at the bottom. And right away we can see here's our read. It's, it's actually hung waiting at a read call, probably looking for our input. If we go up just a little bit more, we'll see here's our write. What is the password? Blah, blah, blah. Um, some more of these writes, you know, you knock on the door, all this stuff. So we can see right here. Okay, the program's kind of starting right here. And it's prompting us for this password. And now it's asking us the password. So we'll say like, you know, uh, OXDF was here. And now, let's see, let's find where that was. It's uh, right here. Um, after that, it writes some stuff and it writes some more stuff. That's not the password and it exits. So we, we don't actually get much out of this. Um, so th in this case, looking at the system calls was not super useful. The other thing we can do is an L trace. And an L trace is going to, instead of looking at the system calls, it's going to look at library calls. So um, when you write a binary, you use all sorts of these libraries. It's called, you know, the standard one is called libc. Um, and there's tons of library calls that are sort of a map, an interface to make you, so you don't have to make system calls. You can make these raw library calls and they will go, or not, not raw, you can make these library calls that then they will handle wrapping around and making the different um, raw system calls necessary to, to, the, to do what you're trying to do. Um, and so if we run ltrace on that, we get the same kind of thing. A lot less junk here. Um, still some, you know, like the, we, this is probably isn't important, but you can see we're calling puts. 
Um, now, put, so the, the author of this binary calls puts. Now, then puts goes and calls these writes, and that's what we saw above right here. This write, you knock on a door. Here's you knock on a door. Um, it calls puts again. Then it calls f write. Um, you, why is calling puts here and write here? I don't know. Um, and now it's calling f gets to get our input. So we'll say like uh, like this video. And now you can see now it's going to call a string char to. Basically, this is just going to be to remove the uh, new line character. And then it's doing a string comparison, a string comparison between like this video, what I put in and super streaker password for you. And so here we, we've, we've, we get an idea of the flow of the binary by just looking at what system call or what system calls and what library calls it makes. And in this case, that gives us the password. Um, let's switch now. We're going to, I'm going to jump over this other one because it, it's going to hammer home some of the same uh, points. Um, encoded payload. Again, this time we're getting a, L32 bit binary, um, statically linked, no section header. Um, this is a pretty weird binary. Um, if we run strings on it, uh, we will see encoded payload um, just one, which is very strange. It's not, it doesn't look like it's using any libraries. Again, we saw that's what the statically linked means. Um, there's no in external imports. Um, we've got this one thing that kind of looks base 64 encoded. Oops, uh, so we'll paste that in. Oops, I didn't copy it. Uh, we can paste this in. I'm intentionally leaving off this leading uh, open square bracket because I don't think that's part of it. I don't know why I can't copy all of a sudden. Let's do that. And if we echo that into base 64 minus D, we see kind of just junk. Um, we can look at that as, as hex and see if we recognize anything, but not really. Um, but let's try, let's, so that's not leading anywhere. Before we uh, like open this up and try to figure out what's going on, let's try our same thing here. So we'll do an S trace on here. Um, I don't know why I put the dot slash there, S trace on encoded payload and all the junk Remember, start at the bottom and right here, right, right at the bottom, we have right hack the box, please S trace me. Um, so I, it's interesting. I don't actually know who this, oh, I, I didn't even run it. Let's see if we run this, nothing happens. Um, so I'm not exactly even sure what's going on. Um, if we go up to the, the top of this S trace which again, you don't necessarily want to do, but there's actually an exec V to encoded payload, encoded payload. That's that's the process starting off um, somewhere up here. Okay, yeah, here's exec V. It's, it's calling bin sh to then call bin sh to print this. So I think it's actually, um, it's creating a shell inside a shell and that that shell is not shown. And so it, again, it's kind of a weird binary, but the point of this is if I think if we actually open this up in Ghidra or Ida, it's a huge mess. Um, but we can get it very quickly just by looking at the system calls that are made by here. Um, interestingly, if we do an L trace on this, um, you'll remember it doesn't even, didn't, we didn't see any libraries at all. Um, let's see if I can actually type in here at the same time. Um, encoded payload, nothing. There's nothing there. So there's no library calls. So it's just system calls. So um, anyway, two reversing challenges that kind of show the things you can do before you start doing typically what people think of as reversing, you know, opening it up and looking at assembly. Um, and uh, really useful stuff to have in your toolbox. So thanks for sticking around to the end. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.